We're used to the idea that what looks and feels like fresh air can contain all sorts of dangers. But the latest pollutants to concern us are actually in your home and mine. They're microplastics, tiny fragments of plastic that are less than five millimetres in size. We've come to one Sydney home to find out what lurks inside. Oh, Hello, hi, Eleanor. How are you? I'm great, I'm great. Would you like to come in? Yeah, I'll take my shoes off. Great. I've come to the home of Eleanor Saxon Mills, a busy mum to one-year-old Sonny and four-year-old Ines. Cup of tea? I would love a cup of tea, yeah, thank black. you very much. Yeah, just black, thanks. Thanks so much, that's great. So what have you heard about microplastics before we came along? I've heard only a little bit that it's everywhere, especially in our food, and that there's huge amounts in us, which is kind of a little bit terrifying. But it's, it is everywhere. Yeah. You know, I thought tea was safe. I mean, what could be safer than tea and tea bags? And then I discovered that even tea bags have microplastics in them. You just can't escape it. It's, yeah, that's crazy. It, Do you want to show me around the kitchen? We'll see yes. what you've got. Yeah, yeah, go right ahead. So let's look at the fridge. Yeah. Let's show Dr Norman all of our plastic in here. I mean, it's very hard to buy stuff that's not wrapped in plastic. Yep, everything. All sorts of plastic here, no glass, just plastic bottles, plastic containers. OK, show me your secret stash. Yes, the Tupperware. That's up here. Right. Yeah. Let's lift you up here. Yeah. Oh, here we go, the stash. <laughs> this is all the plates in here and plastic. Do you put plastic yes. in the dishwasher? Yes. Am I allowed to? Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there should be plastic in there now. Um, yes. Yeah. You know what they're saying about plastic in dishwashers these days? Please don't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> so what was here beforehand? Um, it was just grass and a hill's hoist and that was it. Eleanor knows and does more than most when it comes to the environment. She grows her own veggies and raises her own chooks. They give us a couple of eggs a day, which is awesome. So she's certainly keen to find out how to minimise potential microplastic danger inside the house. What are microplastics? Microplastics are those small bits of plastic. They either come from fragments of larger plastics or they're intentionally added as microplastics to products. But they can get very small indeed, can't they? They can. We're now finding plastics down to the nanoscale. So plastics just fragment over time. They don't biodegrade within our lifetime. They'll just get smaller and smaller under UV light or through action. Um, fragments come off. And how do microplastics actually get inside your body? Breathing it in, drinking and eating are the main sources. The finer particles tend to settle in the bottom of the lungs and they move through the bloodstream across, across the membrane because they're fine enough. Similarly, with what food we eat, you know, those smaller particles uh, will move across the, the, the stomach wall and into the bloodstream and then they're distributed around the body. The third major source is applying it on our skin. Rather than assume where the highest exposure to microplastics are in Eleanor's house, we're actually going to measure them over a few weeks. We can't measure what microplastics Eleanor's family is eating, but these Petri dishes will catch the plastic fibres and particles they might breathe in from the air. We'll have the results back in a couple of weeks. It's hard to imagine a world without plastic. It's in the clothes we wear, the carpets we walk on, the pans we use for cooking, and the packaging in the supermarket. Plastic production has grown more than 200-fold in the last 75 years and is showing no signs of slowing down globally. There are around 16,000 chemicals in plastics, and of the few which have been tested for safety, a significant proportion show signs of being harmful. We did have a look in the kitchen, but not in the cupboard. We actually... Dr Scott Wilson has picked up the Petri dishes from Eleanor's home and is analysing them in the lab. 
really in the home, it's it's the fibres. It's you know ninety percent of what we're seeing are fibres like this on the screen. And just at this fibre level, can that have an effect on the body? Yeah, I mean, we're breathing it in, and so it can get trapped in the lungs. Um, the larger particles get expelled as we cough it out, but the smaller particles get caught and, and reside there and can move across into the bloodstream. He's also taken a sample from inside Eleanor's vacuum cleaner. It picks up lots of plastics. As you can see, there's some larger fragments there, some smaller fragments, but they're, they're heavier particles that just fall on the ground. And is there any evidence that that sort of material is what we're ingesting? Potentially, um, particularly with kids and, and babies crawling around on the ground. The potential for human harm is significant. It's not just the thousands of chemicals that have not been tested for safety. There are contaminants and additives, some of which have already been banned. And then there's nanoplastics, which can get into the brain, perhaps causing inflammation. The reality with microplastics is that we're flying blind, relying on animal studies. If you put microplastics in the water with fish or with some invertebrates, they'll change their growth behaviour uh, and or die, depending on the concentration. There was a study done where they put microplastic in the water supply of mice and the ones that had been exposed to microplastics were behaving as if they had early onset dementia. Oh, Norman, welcome back. Nice I've come you. back to give Eleanor the results from the Petri dishes. Where do you think was highest? Um, I actually think it was Sonny's bedroom because we had it right next to where the nappies are and every time I took a nappy out or got his clothes out, I just thought, there's got to be a lot of plastic floating around here. So, it was your bedroom. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I would put that right down the bottom of the list. I'm Second was the bathroom. OK, yeah. And then in here and the play area. Right. And the kitchen, you know, parts of the kitchen were high, but... The pantry was really, really low. Right, OK. Gosh, that really surprises me. Yeah. I don't think we have a lot of plastic sort of stuff in our room, but maybe it's the clothes. And... You, uh, you don't, but it's fibres, you see. So what, what you get is the synthetic fibre yeah. off the carpet, <laughs> off the clothes yeah. and towels and what have you. So it's, it's kind of different. You're thinking about the kitchen, yeah. but in fact what you're getting there are, are the fibres. <laughs> And in, the same as in the bathroom, but also in the bathroom you've got complications with cosmetics yep. and things like that. And as for the play area, oh, it was heaviest so not so much in fibres, but plastic fragments. So do I have to chuck out all the kids' toys, all the plastic? How worried should I be? Look, a lot of parents are worried about this. Um, I'm not the expert. They are progressively, some of them changing to wooden toys and so on. What our resident expert, Scott, says is as long as you're vacuuming regularly, whether it's the carpet or your wooden floor, then you're getting rid of the plastic particles from the environment, and that's yeah. probably the best thing you can do. It's easy to get panicked about all this, so it's important to remember that the evidence for harm is not solid, well, at least not yet. And the question is, how long do you wait for proof? So the experts say you should do what you can. So here's what I've done. I no longer wrap food in plastic wrap. Certainly got rid of plastic chopping boards, you just don't know what's breaking off there. Plastic utensils, which crumble in the heat. Non-stick cookware has gone from my household, gets scratched, you don't know what's coming off there. Trying very hard to get rid of plastic containers. Certainly don't put plastic in the microwave and don't put them in the dishwasher and replacing it with glass. Any time you use a high wash cycle or high temperatures, you are basically going to be eroding, like micro erosion off the surface of those plastics that you've got in there. So you, you're actually creating microplastics by um, putting them in, in your dishwasher. So have I scared you? A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. So what people talk about a lot is that when you're changing curtains, renewing carpets, you know, look for natural fibres rather than synthetic mixes because that increases the flux of microplastics into your environment yeah. in general. But those are slow processes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the interesting thing is that 
If everybody does that a little bit, the market will change. Yeah. You know, it should be good. And protect the health of people like Sunny in the years to come. Yeah, thanks, Norman.